Hey everyone, Paul here. Today I'm going to be showing you guys a strategy that I've talked about before on this channel. It's a pretty effective strategy. This is the 9 -90 -95 strategy. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to do it for the stock market. We're going to go back and look at this again and uh, kind of uh, look at certain points, uh, best time frames to do this strategy. Uh, because from looking at this from other assets the strategy does work well but with the stock market you have to focus on certain time frames to get you know if, if you want results you know on, on an intraday level you have to fo focus on uh, smaller time frames so we're gonna we're, we, we won't be really we can't really look at the bigger time frames um but we will look at the hour and then we'll look at you know the first thing we want to check is if it's crossing on the hour and then if it's not then we'll go down to uh smaller time frame so uh so we're going to plug in the 990.95 we're going to see why this is such a good strategy because it's the 90 and the 95 act more those levels are it show you a point that really the asset has to break through and uh, if you find it if it you know it go, gets if the candle gets to that that 9095 it'll reject it or push through which is why there's such a good strong strategy in my opinion so let me show you how to set it up and we'll be looking at this with the s p 500 today okay so now there's there's two tickers here if you're dealing with the uh stock market here if you're doing the s p 500 there's spy you'll want to do spy if you're doing it on robin hood but it, you you, if you're doing it on Forex, you want to do SBX. So it's the same thing, uh, but we're going to stick to uh, the S&P 500. So real quickly, I want to look at some higher time frames. And we want to get a general idea what the direction is. So the first thing you want to do is you want to load up your... You, you want to go to here to your indicators, and you want to go to CM. CM may trend bars, and you want to click that three times. So... Uh, well, once you do, you want to set your your settings to nine, and what I do is I turn off the bar color as well. And when you get to the ninety ninety five, I make it more thick than the the nine is less thick. But that's just personal preference. Like I said, the ninety ninety five is mainly there to show you the support level, and it either has to break through it or reject from it. So it's important to have ninety ninety five just kind of more thick in my opinion but anyway this one here is the nine and then you have the 90 and the 95 so if anybody wants to know the background of how i found these particular moving averages i got it from getting the uh, ghost market pro package uh, paid indicator uh, i basically got it by taking away you know a lot of the moving averages and i, I kind of Figured out the strategy from from experimenting with Ghost Marker Pro. But anyway, that's how I came up with this formula. Uh, so anyway, once you have your moving averages, you also want to load up your differences of two difference of two moving averages because you don't want to just rely on the, on the moving averages. You need other confirmations as well. So go to differences of two moving averages, and you want to put in 9 and 20. So the strategy is very simple. Uh, what you want to focus on and focus on this in the longer time frames, but when we're dealing with the stock market, it, it might not happen for all. If you're doing this on the day, uh, you basically want to wait for the 9 to cross the 90, 95, either crossing up or crossing down. So we see this happen on the day chart here. So this would have been a good time to actually get in uh, you see the the results that you could have got if you came in right here. You see the line coming through the 9.90.95. And you could have held a, from this point on, you could have held a, a pretty big, or like a week. You could hold it for a week and you'd still be good. And this would have resulted in a week about $2,306 with one contract. Now, what you want to do here, and if you want to do this on the day, you want to wait for a cross, 
And if you miss the cross, you can revert to your EMA difference here, and you can you can find other moments to get in. So basically, uh, with the EMA difference, you want to come in every time it either goes light green or light red. So if you miss this cross right here, the next time to get in would have been right here, and you could have rode this one out for a couple of days from from here all the way up to about here it shows you when to get out so this is 15 days you would have had to hold your contract for 15 days but you would have made about two thousand dollars for one contract so that's that's how you basically do it. You, what you want to do what you want to do is you want to look at the higher time frames to kind of get the general idea of what direction the asset is going and once you have a good idea of the direction it's going you can go to smaller time frames and most people will probably want to do it on an intraday level so we can look at the hour so we know for that the overall direction right now for it is going up we see that on the hour as well because you see that it has crossed right here so if you miss this cross right here you could have got in right here on the hour but you you have some other times that you can actually get in for little scalps so if you miss this cross right here, you can come in right here for a quick one, or you can just scalp it right here. So basically, if you if you miss the cross, then you look at your EMA difference. Where when it turns light green, now if you're if you're doing bullish, you want to look for light green. If it's bearish, you want to look for light red. So anyway, uh, since this is one way to do it with, with looking at the uh, EMA difference, but also since we personally know that the trend is going up, we can go to smaller time frames like the 15 minute and we can look at the 15 minute and we can just focus on the moment when the line, so we know the direction's going up. So we want to wait for a little pullback. We want to wait for it to pull back a bit like it did right here. We know the overall direction going up, but, but we saw a little pullback right here. So you want to make sure, uh, since we know the direction's going up, we want to make sure that it crosses back up on the 15 minutes. So on a smaller time frame, how I would do this is I would wait for a little pullback, and then I'd wait for, uh, if, we're, if we're in a bullish territory here, I'd wait for the, the, the 9 to cross back into the 995 so you could have gone in right here and rode it out all the way up to here and on a smaller time frame on an intraday level you made about 412 dollars so so on a smaller time frame on the 15 minute or the five or the three you want to focus when when it comes back down now if you're if it's bearish you want to do the opposite but right now we're focusing on bullish because that, that's the overall trend but you want to wait for it to completely, for the 990 to change colors and for it to come down. And you want to you want to wait for the the nine to cross back up, since the overall trend is going up. You want to wait for the the nine to cross back through the uh, the 9095 on a smaller time frame. So you see that happen right here, and and you could have got in for a scalp for a day. And you would have made about 900 bucks right there for one contract. So you just find all those moments when it's crossing back up, when the trend is going, when the trend is up. So we see a moment right here. Now this is only, I only do this for the stock market because, uh, because you got time and you got contracts and you don't have as much time as you do if you're doing other assets. So that's why I... The only time I focus on smaller time frames is for this reason because you don't have as much time as you do with other assets. But if this, if if there is no time, if you know contracts are expiring and you want to make money for the day, focus on the uh, focus on smaller time frame. But otherwise, if you're doing if you're doing spy on forex, you can hold for longer. So uh, you can. You can hold for longer, but this is just for the purpose of contracts and they expire. Uh, this move, you see the 990, uh, 990, 95 cross again, and you would have made about $400 in about three hours. And we see it crossing again here, You're right about here. So we would ride this out. That's three days. You want to go smaller, 
there's about four hours and you made uh, two hundred and eighty one dollars so you can actually find small ones and you can actually find some pretty big ones uh, you doing it on a smaller time frame you do run the risk of uh, entering into a consolidation point so just be careful of that I would have my consolidation indicator on there as well but here we see it crossing again right here you can ride this out let's do a day try to do a day here okay that's that's a day this is four hundred and sixty two dollars with one contract so you guys get the general idea you get to get the overall trend you look at longer time frames look at your day uh, look what the overall trend is doing and if overall it's going up which spy is doing spy has been going up since november 6th so the overall trend for spy is up so that's personally what i would focus on i'd focus on all the moments where it goes up so look at it on the day and then go to your hour go to your hour see if you see any cross points see if the 990.95 is crossing on the hour if you miss it on the hour then go to your email difference and you can find little moments to scalp uh, if you're late on this then you can go to a smaller time frame like a 15 minute and wait for it to pull back in the opposite direction and then wait wait uh wait for the the 990 95 to cross back again either up or down whether you're going bullish or bearish but anyway this strategy works really well in my opinion so first you want to make sure you get the overall direction and then just go with that direction on the smaller time so because this is uh what most people will do for this strategy is uh, they'll do it, you know, they'll do it on uh, Robin Hood and they'll do it with the uh, expiration. So uh, this video is meant for those that are doing it on Robin Hood, but you can also trade on Forex. And w when you were just trading SBX on Forex, you don't have to worry about expiration. This video is mainly for those that, uh, you know, have the contracts on Robin Hood and they, they don't have a lot of time. So. Uh, by doing that, get the overall direction, focus on the hour. If, if you miss the cross on the hour, go to a smaller time frame. So works really well. Anyway, if you guys like the video, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in future videos.